What's going on? How come I just heard her begging him to tell her what's going on? Something's up, and I'm going to find out what. I haven't killed anyone, have I? You do not mention that again, do you hear me? Karen, what's going on? We're brothers who wind each other up like crazy, we always have. I heard the word killed. Who have you killed? Kieran hasn't killed anyone. Neither have I, for that matter. But the way he's carrying on, you'd think I had. I don't understand. The night of the Christmas party. He drove me so mad, I went kind of crazy and had to go at this place. I started a fire. I knew there weren't any guests in the rooms, but I didn't know Sophie was asleep upstairs. She could have died, but she didn't. Yeah, only because I got here in time. Yeah, all right. It was stupid. Like I said, I haven't killed anyone. Well, that was quite a night. Yeah, Sophie was pretty shaken up, we all were. I wonder if she knows what kind of family she's marrying into. Uh, he's not all that bad. He just gets a bit carried away sometimes. Need a bit of tough love from Brother Dearest to keep me in line. Yeah, and you walked in on some. That's what it was. Uh-huh. So what do you want, then? I came here to ask some straight questions and get some straight answers, but what's the point? I don't believe a word you say. Sophie will be the same in a few months. I've tried to tell her, but she's not ready to hear it. What questions? What's she been saying to Sophie? Whoa, very impressive. Thank you very much. It was already pretty clean when I started. The oven, on the other hand? Yes, I try not to look too closely in there. You're a very brave woman. Well, trust me, it was the highlight of my day. A little stir-crazy, are we? I'm not very good at doing nothing. I thought you were working later. I would have cooked you some dinner. Well, I'm sure we can scratch something together. <laughs> Evening. Hey, what's with all the stuff in the garage? I can't fit my car in there. Uh, oops, I had to clear out my apartment and I didn't know where else to put it. Right. Well, you know what it's like when you move. You drag all this junk around with you and then you unpack and think, why? Why did I keep this? Well, job for you tomorrow, maybe? Sort through the things you don't want? Yeah, sorry. I will try and make some room. No, that's not what I meant. His, his car is fine where it is. There's a charity drive coming up soon. I've got a box of stuff I want to donate to. Oh. Only if you want to, of course. Let's face it. I'm not going to need it where I'm going, am I? Is my dad still here? He said he would be. Uh, no, he left about an hour ago. Oh, why did I bother coming back to work? I thought he wanted to see me. Mm, not that he mentioned. I'll see you tomorrow. OK, bye. Sophie. Look, you said it all at Sugar. I don't need to hear it again. I've had some new information since then. What? Is it true your future brother-in-law tried to burn down the IV? You're telling the story. The night of the Christmas party. You were asleep upstairs. You could have died. Yeah, well, I didn't. Kieran got there in time. Your hero. What's your point? The man is dangerous. You need to get away from him. And don't ask me which one, because they're as bad as each other. <laughs> so it's like some messed up kid who goes off half-cocked all the time. I think he got a bigger fight that night than I did. OK, one, his name's not even Sid. Even that's a lie. And two, I can't believe you're being so calm about this. Kieran explained everything. Yeah, he's moved on from playing with matches to leasing dodgy cars. He got ripped off. It wasn't his fault. Now he's $5,000 down and I feel sorry for him. I give up. Yay! Look, I know that Kieran wasn't great to you, OK? But for what it's worth, I think that you were really good for him. You changed him, so I should probably thank you. so loud that it was actually hurting my ears. <laughs> What's funny? Nothing. <laughs> if you call me a Nana one more time... Shut up and buy me a drink. <sighs> what would you like? Um, a tequila for me and a cup of tea for Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Two shots, please. I, I'm thinking we've got work tomorrow. What? Sorry, I, I can't really hear you. My ears are still ringing. Maybe we should go. What? <laughs> Tequila, please, at times two. <laughs> Sorry, is my wedding boring you? Not yet, but, but it is after 11. It's a bit late to be fretting over a budget, darling. Hello, Callum speaking. Mum, how are you? Is everything... Oh, good. She got your wedding invitation. 
Great. What's that? Oh, that's wonderful, but you will be here a week early. No, Mum, there's nothing wrong with wanting to spend time with your family. Don't worry, I will be there. I'm writing it down as we speak. Good. Look, uh, Sophie's here. Do you want to have a word? OK, good. She says you need to go and get your beauty sleep. She'll see you soon enough. OK, good, Mum. Great. OK, bye-bye. And exactly how soon is soon enough? <laughs> Tomorrow morning I'm going to pick her up from the airport. <gasps> Whoopee. <laughs> you invited her. Not to take off my life for the next week, which is exactly what will happen. <laughs> Yeah, that was the best time that I've had in ages. <laughs> I hope that wasn't a good night, Kath. Well, it should be, because you are a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> shh, 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 shh. Don't wake up. Don't wake up. J JJ's at your mum's. No, it's not JJ that I'm worried about. Hi. Sorry. You will be in the morning. What have you been drinking? I can smell it from here. We had a couple of shots, so what? So keep the noise down. <laughs> Love the Nana. Your family's full of them. <laughs> Between you and me, she's a little bit better. She's got a good point, though. Bed. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Libby. How do you spell corsage? Hmm? Corsage, you know, the little floral doohickeys. Oh, uh, C-O-R-S-A-G-E, I think. It's an old-fashioned word. Turns out she's an old-fashioned kind of girl. Uh, Sophie? Yeah, apart from the spelling, of course. Uh, that's very 21st century. Keeping you busy, I see. Yes, well, she's only going to get married once, I hope. I hope so, too. I really do. You don't sound very confident. Well, I know Karen, and I thought you did, too. Well, he loves her for all his faults. And there are plenty of those. Sounds a bit like sour grapes, Libby. You were engaged to the man. And I called it off because I found out I couldn't trust him. I still don't. Libby, if there's something you know about Kieran that Sophie doesn't, now would be a good time to bring it up. There isn't. Good. Now, before I forget, uh, I won't need you at the 10.30 meeting. I've moved that to Friday. I'm picking my mother up from the airport. Lovely. There is something you could do for me, though. Sure. Uh, the charity appeal. There's a whole pile of stuff at my place that needs collecting. I'd rather not have my mother be the first to rake through it. <laughs> you want me to pick it up? If you don't mind. I know it's a pain. Not at all. OK. Uh, Rachel should be there. Uh, she'll show you where it all is. Cool. Mm. Uh, she has some stuff that she wants to donate also. She might need a hand sorting through it. But she'd appreciate the company. I know that much. OK. Drum roll, please. And the winner is... If you give me a bit of hush, I'll tell you. And the winner of the inaugural Shortland Street Baby Photo Competition is... Maya Jeffries. <laughs> Who isn't here. But she should be somewhere because she's rostered on. I didn't see her come in. Don't look at me. Do you want me to call her? Oh, don't bother. The news will keep. <laughs> what have I missed? Good night's sleep, by the looks of you. You should have got the memo yesterday. We were going to do it at lunchtime, but... People weren't keen. So we thought we'd get it out of the way at morning tea. <laughs> the baby photo competition. Sc Scotty has just announced the winner. Mm, is that all? <laughs> oh, yeah, big waste of time since the winner didn't bother to show up. Well done. <laughs> yeah, you can pick up your prize later. I'm sure you're keen to get to your desk, given how late you are. Expensive stuff? Very. I only hope they know what they're getting. <laughs> These can go, definitely. <gasps> yes, they are what you think they are. I had them on the night of the accident. Oh. I still had them on when I came too, which is weird because I always take them off to drive. Always. 
But I'm not saying it wasn't my fault. It's just they're probably the reason I didn't break when I needed to. Well, that and trying to light a cigarette. Pretty distracting when you're driving. I don't smoke. Why would you? Hi, we're back. Mum, uh, you remember Libby? Hi. Hello. A and this is Rachel, our house guest. Um, my mother, Mona. Hi there. Well, I should get this out to the car. Is there anything else? Take the lot. You may as well. Are you sure? Yeah, you take that. I'll bring this box. The charity collection I told you about. Oh, looks like good stuff. Yeah. Very generous. Good girl ahead. She's just a wee thing. Oh, I might, thanks. House guest? What kind of euphemism's that? It isn't one. I'm not the old prude you think I am, Callum, and I'm not stupid either. Pretty little thing like that under your roof. Mum, there's nothing going on between me and Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You could do a lot worse. I suppose I'm in Sophie's room, am I? Yeah. It's all right. I know the way. What is wrong with this stupid thing? Yeah, let me have a go. No, I can do it. Sorry. Lack of sleep means headache, means evil charge nurse. Well, I promise I'll leave you alone tonight. You can go to bed at 8 o'clock and I won't even call you a nana. It's not going to help me through this shift, is it? Well, why don't you have a nap? There's a bed right here. The patient's not due for half an hour. Mm. I won't tell anyone. Not on a bed I just made. I can't. Daniel, I need that gurney. What for? Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Ta-da! Your day better wait. I can't. You're almost due for lunch anyway, and I promise I'll wake you. Like you did this morning? Mm. Hop up, come on. 20 minutes, that's it. I will be here with a cup of tea. Sweet dreams. Where's Maya? No idea. Um, lunch, maybe? This boy you're marrying. Your father says I must have met him the last time I was here, but I can't put a face to the name. Was he in your class at school? No, uh, Kieran runs the IV, the bar near the hospital. Oh, steady income, then. There's always money to be made from booze. He does OK. I didn't see a wedding register. Sorry? All the flash presents you want your guests to fork out for. That's how they do it these days, isn't it? I suppose there's some fancy shop downtown with everything on display except the prices. You don't have to get us anything, just you being here is enough. <laughs> Actually, I did get you a little something. You might as well open it now, it's not much. Thank you. I didn't knit them specially. I had them put away for a neighbour's grandkitty, but the poor wee thing was still born. So they give them to me. It's my way of letting you off the hook. If I already know, you don't have to tell me. I knew the moment I got the invitation. There's only one reason a girl your age gets married. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, you are. I'm not pregnant, nor am I planning to be. And why do you get hitched? Oh, as he made of money. Did you think you'd better grab him while you had the chance? No, Kieran and I love each other. Oh, you're too young to know what love is. What's he, 20 at the most, I'm guessing? Kieran's 30. What's he doing with a schoolgirl like you? I'm not at school anymore. All grown up, are you? 18 and you've got it all worked out. I can't teach you a thing, can I? Give us Kieran a call. Get him over for a cuppa. I want to talk to him. Where's Maya? I don't know. Nicole said she went on lunch, but that was ages ago. Oh, this is so annoying. Uh, excuse me, Scotty. Mrs. Glamazina from ED. I was told this what? Yeah, you're in the right place. Cool. Maya arranged this transfer for 2 p.m. She said she'd be here to help settle the patient. All right, I'll give you a hand. Thanks. Maya! Wake up. What? What's wrong? Get up, now. Can you get this gurney out of here? Sure. We'll wait outside. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I was on lunch and I just thought I'd take a nap. In a public ward? With a patient due in? What's the time? 
Oh, no, someone was supposed to wake me. There's no point trying to shift the blame. You've earned yourself a formal written warning. I'm so sorry. Don't tell me. Tell the patient. And Daniel, and especially Tanya. She might be your sister, but it doesn't mean you can disregard her at work. It's your job to be there when she needs you. I know. Now go and splash some water on your face. The sleep didn't help. You still look hungover. Those wharfies want their money. If they beat me to a pulp and I end up over the road, how long do you think it's going to take people to figure out I'm not who I say I am? Who's going to be in the spotlight then? Once the police start asking I've questions... I've got a wedding to pay for, all right? Why can't you get that through your thick skull? There won't even be a wedding at this point. Just shut up, all right? All you do is you go on and on about it. Five grand on my safest houses. You need to do this, Kieran. What if Sophie found Fine. out? I put on the credit card, but not one word to Sophie. Do you hear me? Not one word. Hi. Miss Jeffries. Here we go again. What would Sophie think? It's her I'm after. Well, she's not here, but I'm happy to pass on a message. It's OK. I'll catch up with her when I see her. Look, if you've got some more questions about a little fire, then ask away. I don't. Right. So you want to try and warn her off me again? Being somewhat boring, maybe. He's a rude little beggar. I don't know what you ever saw in him. Sophie tells me you're 30. Yeah, I am. In my day, that was practically middle-aged. If you weren't married by the big 3 your life was as good as over. Oh, I'd best get a move on then, haven't I? Oh, it's a different world now. Don't know why you're bothering. You're a smoker. Uh, yes, I am. But he is quitting. He will have stopped by the time of the wedding. Under orders, are you? Yeah, something like that. There's no point in taking a man's vices away from him, Sophie. He'll only find worse ones. Your grandfather was a smoker, rolled his own for years. It's probably what would have carried him off if the bowel cancer hadn't gotten first. Dead at 59. Well, I really do intend to quit. I know you don't need a seal of approval from me, but you're getting it anyway. Look after her, that's all I'm saying. I can't stop thinking about it. Tanya so dogged you in. No, she wouldn't. Well, she was right outside the ward when I left. She could have looked in and seen you. Did you ask her? No, because then she'd think I was accusing her and I'm not. Well, Scotty knew you were hungover somehow. Who could have told him? Only me or you or... Or oh, he made an educated guess. I was late for work. I looked terrible. I went to sleep on the job. Well, what about yesterday, when you were late for the GRK infusion? What did Tanya do? She had to tell Scotty. She needed him to help her. Well, this morning, then. She was pretty hacked off when you wouldn't find Gabrielle for her. If you'd woken me up when you said you would. I said I was on my way. I got caught up with work. I'm not blaming you. I should never have gone to sleep in the first place. I should never have been so tired in the first place. Well, there's such a thing as loyalty, you know? Tony could have blown a stack at you, but to land you with a formal warning. We'll get her back tomorrow. No, we won't. Tomorrow we are in our best behaviour, both of us. And no more boozing on school nights, I can't hack it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. This is my career. Twenty-two thousand seven hundred. So if that's nearly three grand over, we've got to cut back somewhere. What? There's nothing to cut. Evening. Hey, Dad. Um, where's Grandma? Uh, she's across the road surprising Hunter. I wanted to bring her in for a drink later. I just wanted to make sure that she was welcome here. Yeah, of course she is. Kieran loves her. More to the point, she gave us her blessing. Mm. It was weird, but whatever happy pills she's taking, I hope she keeps taking them. Yes, I fully expected to be put on the rack about Rachel staying with us, and she didn't raise an eyebrow. It's probably got to do with the wedding. Oh, well, I wish we asked her to make the wedding cake, then. Because that would have saved us... $500. Are uh, things a bit tight? Ah, uh, we'll get there. You know, it is traditional for the father of the bride to take a hit. No, it's OK. I said I'd pay for all, and I will. Well, I'm happy to help. On the condition that you don't raid my fridge once you're a married woman. You're on. <laughs> Do you have any idea how much you actually need? Do you have any idea how much she eats? I'm winning on the deal already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I got this crazy text from Dad saying, go to the cafeteria when you finish work, I've got a surprise for you. I didn't think it would be you. Oh, look at you in your uniform. Have you lost weight? Oh, I don't think so, Grant. Oh, here, yeah, you need this more than I do. We can share. You're here for the wedding, right? Of course. It's all anyone's talked about since I arrived. Yeah, it's been a bit like that. So, let's talk about you. I always thought you'd be the first one down the aisle. Well, I need a girlfriend first. You haven't got one. What about Morgan? That was over ages ago. Oh, I liked her. She was very good to me. Yeah, she was. She's still working at the hospital. You won't mind if I say hello when I see her, will you? Um... Oh, we ended badly, did it? No, we were still good mates. Were it? Sorry to tell you this, Green. Morgan's dead. Hey, did you forget something this morning? No, I just wanted to talk to you about the night of the Christmas party. Oh, my favourite subject. It won't take long, I promise. You better come in. You here on your own? Callum and Mona should be back any minute. Must be hitting a bedtime. The thing is, you say you don't smoke. I don't. Never have. But the next day there was an unlit cigarette on the floor under the driver's seat. So it was a panel beater's loan car. Maybe it was the guy who had it before me. Ah, I thought it was your car outside. Hi. Look over. Take it. Probably enough for four. Three, actually. All I want is my bed. Good night. So much for the good mood. Didn't want to have a drink with Sophie and Kieran. Didn't say a word all the way home. Oh, she must be tired. It must have been an early flight this morning. Well, I'm going to head off. I'll, um, I'll catch you tomorrow. OK, night. Night. Odd seeing Libby here at this hour. What did she want? I really don't know. Mm. Mum, everything all right? I can't do it. I can't stay in this house if she's here. I beg your pardon? Why are you giving her a place to hide? I don't know. Now, just a second. I won't sleep anyway. If I close my eyes, all I can see is that poor girl dead in a ditch. The only question is where am I going to lie awake all night? Here or some cheap hotel? Now, wait a minute. Mom. I mean it. If she doesn't go, I will. <laughs> 